Hi everyone, welcome to the first video done by Pocket Mars. This is the first episode of a series where I will be remaking Club Penguin minigames in the Unity game engine. Many people have fond memories of playing these games, including myself, so I thought it would be a neat learning experience to attempt to recreate some of them. The first game we will be remaking is Bean Counters. In this game you have to catch flying bags full of coffee beans coming out of a truck and load them onto a platform while avoiding other objects such as fish, flower vases, and anvils. So here's a basic outline of what we're going to need to do. We're going to have to create a player that follows the mouse horizontally, spawn bags that launch at varying velocities, create a system of catching bags and loading them onto the platform, create systems such as the player's life, score, and current level, and spawn additional hazards depending on the player's current level. But before we do any of that, we need to get assets from the game that we can use in our remake. So to do this, I use JPEXS, a free flash decompiler. Using this tool is very simple. I downloaded an SWF file of bean counters from the Club Penguin archives wiki, and after opening it in JPEXS, I could easily view and extract the sprites, backgrounds, and sound effects that I needed. After this, I set up the game scene in Unity, laying down the background, the delivery truck, and the platform where the player sets down the bags. It was now time to begin working on the actual gameplay, specifically player movement. At first I simply set the player's x position to be equal to the mouse's x axis, but then this happened. This happens because input.mouseposition returns screen pixel coordinates, not world position. So to fix this, I simply had to use camera.screen to world point, which can easily transform screen space into world space. Now that the player's X position was equal to the position of the mouse cursor in world space, player movement was working smoothly, but I needed to set boundaries to determine where the player could and couldn't move. So I created a float for the mouse's X position that if greater than or less than a specific value would stay equal to that value. This ensured the player's x coordinate would not exceed or fall below a certain point. The next thing to do was to create the flying bags of coffee beans. So I started off by creating a game object and giving it a box collider and rigid body component. Then I created a script that adds a force to the object within a random range when it is spawned. The movement was very floaty, so I changed the rigid body's gravity scale to 5. Then I create a collider on the ground, and when the bag entered this collider, I switched the bag to its damage sprite, deleted its rigid body so it would stay in place, and after 0.5 seconds, deleted the game object. I also made the bag destroy itself upon contact with the player. Now that that was done, I created a script that spawned either one or two coffee bags every second. Now I had to implement a system where the player could catch bags and place them onto the platform. I created a float, player state, that would increase by one when a bag touched the player. If the player clicked the left mouse button while in a certain range of the platform, player state would decrease by one. Then I wrote some messy code that changes the sprite of the player depending on player state to reflect how many bags the player is currently carrying. While we're on the topic of messy code, I should probably talk about how I implemented the stack of bags that gets higher as the player loads them onto the platform. I created another float, stack height, that increases by 1 every time the player puts down a bag. Then I put together a stack of 20 bags in the scene, and I changed which bags would be active depending on the stack height variable. Once stack height reached 20, it would reset to 0 and you would move on to a new level. The next thing I needed to implement was the various flying hazards that came out the truck. In the original game, flying anvils started coming out the truck once you reach level 2, fish start coming out at level 3, and flower pouts come out once you reach level 4. And there's also an occasional extra life thrown out the truck after level 3. 
The hazards function identically to coffee bags, destroying themselves immediately when in contact to the player and destroying after a few seconds when in contact with the ground. I create a float for the player's life that would decrease by one when touching one of the hazards and increase by one when touching an extra life. The last major thing to implement was dying. There are two ways to lose lives in bean counters, either by carrying more than five bags at a time or by getting hit by a flying hazard. I made it so that if either of these things happened, the player would remain in a dead state where he could not move or interact with falling objects for two seconds. After that, the player's life would of course decrease by one. And once the player's life was less than zero, a menu scene would be loaded, effectively ending the game. Now all I had left to do was to create a few smaller things such as UI, a score system, sound effects, and a basic menu. And with that, I was finished with the game. You can find the link to the project's GitHub repository in the description if you're interested in checking it out yourself. I had a lot of fun and learned a lot of new things while doing this, so I really hope this video was fun to watch and taught you a few things as well. I can't wait to create more game dev related videos to share with you all, so it would definitely mean a lot if you subscribe to this channel and like this video if you enjoy this type of content. And if you have any suggestions or things I should take note of for future content, please let me know in the comments. And that's everything, so thanks so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next video.